Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord on this beautiful, blessed Lord's Day and a day in which we get to celebrate those fathers in our lives. On this June the 6th, 2021, June 20th, 2021, we praise God for a new and blessed day. Our call to worship this morning. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Amen. You may be seated for our invocation. O Heavenly Father God, we are just so grateful, O Lord, to you to see another day. We thank you, O God, for rising this morning, and we thank you, O Lord, for the new mercies that met us. We thank you, O Lord, for the opportunity to gather once again as your people, wherever we might be, O God, whether in the church building or in our homes. We know that your spirit is with us. And so we thank you, O God, for being the kind of God that is everywhere at all times. And so we ask, O Lord, that your Holy Spirit would magnify itself to all of us today, wherever we may find ourselves, that we may lift praises in our hearts and on our lips, O Lord, to you who are worthy, who is worthy of all our glory and all our praise. So we ask, O Lord, that you would come and sit with us and worship with us, O God, that our time would not be in vain. And when we leave, O God, this community, O Lord, we know that you will be with us. We bless you and we praise you, O God, in everything that we will experience this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise and adoration on this Father's Day is a hymn that may be familiar to many of us. Faith of our fathers living still. We would ask our music ministry to come at this time. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon fire and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy Whene'er we hear that glory Yeah. 
about the faith of our fathers. Now let us affirm our faith by use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for our scripture lesson this morning, it can be found in John, the fourth chapter, and we'll be reading verses 46 through 54. John chapter four, verses 46 through 54. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover. And they said to him, yesterday it was one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will now prepare for our prayer hymn, which will be led by our music ministry, which will be followed by our morning prayer, which will be led by Reverend Tina. I dream of a city called glory, so bright and so fair, when I enter the gates I cried holy the angels all met me there they carried me I want 
to the one who sustains us. Glory to the one who woke us up this morning to see another day. Glory to the one who loved us so much that he came and he died and he rose again and he sent back a comforter to be with us. Glory to the one, the creator God, who spoke and nothing became something. Glory to the God who sits high and looks low and meets our every need. Glory to the God who allows us to just be in his presence this day. We bless you and we thank you, God, for being that kind of God. 
We thank you, oh God, that you love us despite the sinful creatures that we are. We thank you, God, that you don't consume us, oh Lord, for the wickedness and for our wicked ways. But you choose, oh God, to forgive us and restore us and to bring us back into right relationship with you. On this day, oh God, we are grateful to serve, to love, and to adore God like that. We ask, oh God, that you would hear the prayers of your people. Those who, God, are petitioning you with the prayers from their lips and the prayers from their heart, oh God. Whether it be a prayer of healing, oh God, we ask that your blood would heal. Whether it be a prayer of restoration, oh God, we pray that you would restore and pick up the broken pieces and make them whole again. If it's a prayer of direction, oh God, we ask, oh Lord, that you would give clarity and vision, oh God, that we may walk the path that you have planned for our lives. If it's a plan and a prayer for salvation, oh God, we ask, oh Lord, that you send your spirit, Lord, right now to those who may be reaching out to you and crying out to you, oh God, that they might know you in the forgiveness of their sins, that you might save them even now, oh God. If it's a prayer, oh God, of sustenance, oh God, because the funds are low and the bills are high, oh God, we know that there's nothing that you can't do. We know, Lord, that there's nothing that's too hard for you. And so we ask, oh Lord, that whatever the needs of your people are right now, that you would come and that you would grant them, oh God, maybe not in this moment, oh Lord, but in due time, and in due season, O oh God, hear the prayers of your people and show up, O oh God, in whatever the situations might be. We come, O oh Lord, on this Father's Day, O oh God, and we ask, O oh Lord, a special blessing on those who were born to be heads and not tails, to be lenders and not borrowers. We ask, oh God, that you bless those who are fathers in whatever capacity that might be, oh God, whether they're biological fathers or adoptive fathers or grandfathers or those who stepped in to father a child who was in need, oh God. We ask, oh Lord, that you would just put your hand of mercy upon every man, oh God, who steps into the life of a child, O oh Lord, to lead and guide and instruct and direct as the way that you would have them to do, O oh God. We ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to anoint their lives and bless their lives, O oh Lord, not that they might be puffed up in themselves, O oh God, but that they may overspill and overflow your blessings to them, to those that you have put under their care. Build them up, O oh God, and give them strength on every side, O oh Lord. Hear their prayers, Lord, and their dreams and their hopes, O oh God, that you might answer them, that they might know that there is a God who hears and answers prayer. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to be with us, that you continue to forgive us, that you continue to hold us in your hands, that you continue, O oh Lord, to shower your blessings upon us, O oh God, that we might continue to do the work that you've called us to do. Lord, we know that every day is a gift, and we pray that we never take it for granted, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, a special blessing of comfort, O oh God, to those on this day who are missing their earthly fathers, who are missing their grandfathers and their uncles and their aunts, oh God. We ask, oh Lord, that you would just cover them in your grace this day, that you would dry their tears, oh God, and help to bring to their remembrance all the love 
that they were shown by their fathers, O oh God, that they may know that even though their father is not with them, O oh Lord, that you are the heavenly father and you are always with them. So we bless you, O oh Lord, this day. We count it a joy, O oh God, just to worship you, O oh Lord. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you receive this prayer and whatever my mind or heart has forgotten, O oh God, I pray, Lord, that you would just know what it, the needs are and that you would just answer them, O oh Lord. So we thank you, O oh God, for this moment of prayer and supplication. And we know, Lord, that you will show up in due time and due season and grant these petitions that are on our hearts. We thank you, Lord, for this time, and we thank you, Lord, for your presence, and we thank you, Lord, for your love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. today that you really love the Lord no matter what is going on in your life no matter what strife you're experiencing no matter what's going on all around you it's just you and God and if we just pour out love on God God will pour back love unto us we thank God for the prayer and we thank God for the call response to the prayer at this time we're going to receive a video greeting uh, from the Continental Society's, the Akia Virginia chapter. Good morning to Pastor Adrian V. Nelson II, the ministerial team, members and friends. I am Donna V. Gay, 
president of the Aquaia, Virginia chapter of the Continental Societies Incorporated. Today, virtually, I am joined by members of the Quiet Virginia chapter, along with many of the spouses. The Continental Society's incorporated motto is, our children, our commitment, our concern. Quarterly, our chapter will worship with a church and give a monetary donation to a ministry that supports children. Today, our donation is given to Lomax, Women's Home and Overseas Missionary Society the Buds of Promise. We hope these funds will be used to support the Buds with their school supplies. Thank you. On behalf of Lomax Amy Zion Church, we would like to thank the Continental Societies for worshiping with us today. We hope that you are being blessed by our service and that you will continue to worship with us when you have the opportunity. And we most certainly want to thank you for the very generous gift that you provided to the Lomax Church, specifically the Buds of Promise, that they can continue to do their ministry as children of missions work. So thank you to the Continental Societies and Sister Donna Ganey for that greeting. At this time, uh, we all have an opportunity to give. The Continental Societies has done their part, and now it's our turn to give back to the Lord. And so at this time, if you would, um, if you have the Give the Fi app, we would ask that you would take it out and that you would make your donation, your tithes and offerings to the Lord at this time. Obviously, there are those who continue to mail in their offerings as well as drop them off. We do want to thank you for your continued giving, and we want to now pray over that which we know that God will bless us with. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to give to you these monetary gifts that you have blessed us with. God, you are such a wonderful God who blesses us in so many ways. And so God, we want to be cheerful givers who are excited about giving back to the kingdom of God. We pray God that what we do receive will be used to the glory of your kingdom. And it's in Jesus name we pray, let everyone say amen. Amen. We bless the Lord on this day as he continues to be with us as we worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we prepare to hear the word that the Lord would have for us this day that he has sent through his servant, Pastor Adrian Nelson II, we would be blessed by another selection by our music ministry this morning. Would rather have houses and land Some fall to silver and gold These things that they Hey, hey, hey. 
admit that that song reminds me of my childhood at R.L. Jones Amy Zion Church when we used to sing that song and that was 50 plus years ago so it's been a long journey and I'm sure it's been a longer journey for some others as we've been journeying and walking with Jesus. If you would turn with me to Genesis uh, chapter 22 and we're going to read um, some of the text here. Genesis chapter 22, we'll begin at verse number one. It says, after these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, what our spirits have felt as we have worshiped you today in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, for this moment in time that you set aside to receive a word from you. And so, God, we yield ourselves to you now so that your holy presence can come forth in the form of the preached word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen. 
Today is Father's Day. It is an interesting and complicated day for some people, for both fathers and their children. And so this morning we acknowledge that sometimes the relationships between fathers and their children can be complicated. But today that is not what God would have us to focus on. Rather, this morning God would have us to focus on the complicated and multifaceted relationship between Abraham and God and between Abraham and Isaac and what we as fathers can learn about a father's faith from Abraham. And so today, for the time that is ours, I'd like for you to consider the subject, a father's faith. A father's faith. A commentary reflecting on the relationship between Abraham and God by the time that we find ourselves in Genesis 22 says this, the relationship between God and Abraham is in progress. It has its ups and it's had its downs. Father, I don't know about you, but I don't know whether you're at that Genesis 22 point in your relationship with God, but I'm sure it's safe to say that as fathers like Abraham, our relationship with God is in progress, that it has had its ups and it has had its downs. Abraham has exhibited a, a deep faith in God by listening to the voice of God tell him to leave his country, his kindred, and his clan, and to go to a land that God would show him. Fathers, maybe you have exhibited a deep faith in God as you listen to God's voice as he led you in some ways and to some places that God directed you to go. Yes, you've demonstrated a father's faith. Abraham has had some deep theological conversations with God, including about the promises that God had made to Abraham, promises about Abraham's future and the future of his descendants and all inhabitants of the earth. Fathers, maybe like Abraham, you've had some deep, theological conversations with God, conversations with God about some promises that God has made to you about your future and the future of your family and your impact in the lives of others. But up to this point in the relationship between Abraham and God, Abraham has also had some occasions where he had a lack of faith that God would make good on God's promises to Abraham a lack of faith that resulted in Abraham creating drama in his household by fathering a child with Hagar, his wife's servant. Fathers, maybe like Abraham, you've had times in your life where you didn't have a father's faith that God would make good on God's promises, which resulted in creating some drama in your life and in the life of others, perhaps those in your family. And so the relationship between God and Abraham, and Abraham and God is a work in process, progress. It's had its ups and it's had its downs. And the same thing can be said, I would imagine, for most of us, if not all of the fathers under the sound of my voice today. However, as we will see in today's text, it would appear that by the time we get to Genesis 22 in our text, that, that Abraham has grown to a place where he trusts God greatly. As one commentary notes, from Abraham's perspective, he understands that God is the one who has given him commands and has filled Abraham's life with promise, mm -hmm. has Abraham's best interest at heart. Fathers, do you believe that this day that God has your best interest at heart? I don't know about you, but, but I believe that God has my best interest at heart. This type of understanding that, that God has our best interests at heart is important for us as fathers to have in our lives. In fact, this type of understanding that God has our best interests at heart is important for each and every one of us who claims to be in relationship with God to have whether we're fathers or not. All of God's children should understand that when we're in relationship with God, that God has our best interests at heart. Amen. And so at the outset of Genesis 22, 
we learn that God is about to test Abraham. Verse 1 records after these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and, and Abraham said to him, here I am. Yes, Abraham's faith is about to be tested. Any fathers ever had your faith tested by God? No, I don't mean tested by your spouse or your children or others. And no, I'm not talking about you being tempted by God because God does not tempt us for temptations can end in our own moral failure. And God does not allow for us to be tempted by him because that's not what God does. Fathers, I'm asking you whether you've had your faith tested by God. Maybe God has tested you through your relationship with your wife or your children or as a provider for your family or as a spiritual leader in your home. It is not others who are testing us as fathers, but it is God who is testing us. But the question is, do we recognize it as such? Yes, God had a test that was coming in store and it had Abraham's name all over it. When his name was called by God, Abraham confidently replied, here I am. Mm -hmm. Fathers, do you have a father's faith that would allow God to call your name and you confidently respond to God, here I am? No, Abraham didn't realize that he was about to be tested. He didn't realize why God was calling his name. But Abraham had enough faith and enough trust in God to respond to God saying, here I am. Abraham didn't act like he didn't hear God calling his name, nor did Abraham try to hide from God. Do you remember in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and God called their name, and they hid from God? Fathers, we don't have to hide from God when he calls our name if we've not been acting in a disobedient way. No, fathers, if, if we've been living an obedient life, when God calls our name, then we can answer with confidence like Abraham did. Here I am. We can confidently say in our own way, sup, God? What's up, God? I'm good, God. What's good with you, God? We can just say, here I am, God. So this was the test that God had for Abraham. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. Fathers, we could stay in, in this verse right here for quite a moment, but I won't. Abraham's initial reaction had to be, say, what, God? You want me to do what? Take my son and offer him there as a burnt offering? Abraham had to be thinking, God, you want me to sacrifice my son like I would a burnt offering? Some, some scholars want to point out to the fact and say that, that God never told Abraham to kill or murder his son. But I would argue that that amounts to a theological loophole because I don't understand how you could offer your child as a burnt offering and that, child, and that still not result in the child's death. But what we can agree on, I'm sure, is that God was asking Abraham to sacrifice the thing that he may have loved the most. Here is the first point that we see in our text, which is this. A father's faith requires us to sacrifice what you love for God. Sacrifice what you love for God. Most of us know Abraham's backstory. He'd been promised by God that he would be the father of many, so that Abraham would not be able to count his descendants. The spiritual conundrum that he found himself in was that God made this promise to Abraham, perhaps when Abraham was about 75 years old, and his wife was an old woman who up to this point had never been able to have children, and, and Abraham had never fathered any children. Abraham was promised a child by God, but failed to wait on God to fulfill God's promise. He got ahead of God. To help God in fulfilling God's promises, Abraham fathered a child named Ishmael with his wife's servant, Hagar. This resulted in baby mama drama to the 10th degree. And so at God's direction, Abraham had to send Ishmael and Ishmael's mother away. 
However, that was not the end of Abraham's story because the God that I serve is a promise keeper. And at 100 years of age, Abraham and his wife at 90 years of age, God blessed them with a son whose name was Isaac. It was this son, Abraham's one and only legitimate son, Abraham's one and only son in his life right now, Abraham's one and only son of the promise that God was commanding Abraham to sacrifice. Isaac was the thing that Abraham loved possibly more than anything else, I would imagine. I sometimes wonder whether or not Abraham even loved Isaac more than he loved God. We don't know that from the text. The text doesn't say that. But maybe that's why God had to test Abraham. He needed to see whether or not Abraham loved God more than he loved his own son. And so it is we see that interplay between Abraham and God at, at this point of this test of this father's faith. Will you sacrifice what you love possibly the most for me? Fathers, what do you love possibly more than God? Are you willing to sacrifice it for God? Fathers, what do you love maybe as much as you love God? Are you willing to sacrifice it for God? Fathers, what are the things that you love maybe more than God or as much as God? Are you willing to sacrifice anything and everything because you love God more than you love anything else? I'm here to tell you that, that you've got to be willing to sacrifice what you love for God because God was willing to sacrifice what God loved for you. God wasn't asking Abraham to do anything that God knew that God wasn't willing to do for Abraham. I don't know about you, when I read this text, when I read God's command that Abraham take his son, his only son whom he loved, and sacrifice him, I can't think, help but think about God who was looking into the already completed future, an act of time when God would take his only son, his one and only son whom he loved, and sacrifice him for the sins of the whole world. And so because God so loved the world and God so loves you and God so loved Abraham, he said that I need you to sacrifice the thing that you love. A father's faith requires you to sacrifice what you love for God. As our text goes on, we see that clearly Abraham had the type of relationship with God that he could trust what God was commanding him to do. Do you see how God told Abraham to go to the land of Moriah and I will show you the mountain where I want you to offer Isaac as a sacrifice? In their relationship, this relationship between God and Abraham, God had done this before in Abraham's life. In fact, in what is recorded as the beginning of the relationship between God and Abraham, God had given Abraham a command to go to a land that God would show Abraham. There was a familiar aspect of Abraham's relationship with God. Abraham had trusted God before when God had said, step out on faith and go to a land that I will show you. And so God's command for Abraham to step out on faith and go to a mountain range in the land of Moriah probably felt familiar to Abraham. As fathers of faith, don't you know that God is always building on our present relationship that we have with God? If we would but look for the, the breadcrumbs of faith, we would be able to see that in our faith journey with God, God has been leaving some breadcrumbs of faith all along so that we can know that it is God who is leading us and feeding us and t telling us to go to higher levels of faith in God. God is always trying to build up our faith muscles by testing our faith. I know some fathers love to work out, building up their physical bodies, their muscles, so that they can flex them everywhere they go, wearing short shirts so they can flex what they've been working on. Well, sometimes God is trying to build up our faith muscles, fathers, so that we can go and flex our faith muscles for others to see and have a witness for those around us. So Abraham rose early in the morning and he saddled his donkey and he took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and he set out and went to the place in the distance that God would show him. Remember, 
Abraham was being tested by God. He did not know he was being tested. But what should have been clear was that if he was going to be obedient, then there were some acts that he needed to engage in. There were some things he needed to do. And that's what we find as our second point. A father's faith requires you to be obedient to God. Fathers, when God commands us to do something, when our faith is being tested, whether we know it or not, we've got to be obedient to God. And so it is that we see Abraham being obedient to God. Early in the morning, Abraham began his faith journey to the land of Moriah. Abraham was obedient. He did not wait around. He didn't drag his feet, hoping that God would change his mind about what he'd been asked to do. He'd heard God, and he was obedient, and he went and set out on his faith journey. Abraham was, was also obedient to God in that he took the necessary steps to accomplish the thing he'd been commanded to do. He gathered up Isaac, who to that point was the sacrifice. He cut the wood that would be needed for the burnt offering. Fathers, when God commands us to do something, when God is testing our faith, are we obedient to God? Do we take those steps that are necessary to do what God has commanded us to do? Fathers, I don't know what it is Fathers, I don't know what it is that God may be commanding you to do in your life, but what we can learn from Abraham is that we have to be obedient to God. We can't drag our feet on this journey of faith that we're on. No, we must trust God enough to begin this leg of our faith journey that we're on with God. And we have to take some affirmative steps toward doing what it is that God has commanded us to do. And so a father's faith requires us to be obedient to God. I am going to try my hardest not to get caught up in verse number four of our text, which says that on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Yes, this is an Old Testament text. In fact, it is a text that is found in the book of beginnings. But when I see any place in scripture a reference to on the third day, it kind of causes my spirit to begin to rise because it is on the third day that miracles happens. It's on the third day when deliverance happens. It's on the third day when the enemy is defeated. It's on the third day when the perfect plan of God comes to fruition in our lives. And so we have to recognize when we're in a third day moment with God. And what we need to understand is that God told him, look to a place far away. Sometimes we can't see the deliverance that's coming, the breakthrough that's coming, because it's in a place far away. But all we need to do is look and know that the third day is coming. If we can just see it and have faith in God. Can you see the place of faith which is far off? And so Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. It is my belief that verse five of our text is the key to understanding today's scripture. It is here in verse five that we find our third and final point, which is this. A father's faith requires you to worship God with expectancy, mm -hmm. to worship God with expectancy. God had commanded Abraham to go to a place that God would show him in the land of Moriah and once there to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. If Isaac was offered as a burnt offering, that would mean that Isaac would be sacrificed and his life would have come to an end. So why then did Abraham say to the young men who were traveling with him and Isaac, you stay here, Isaac and I are going on to the place that God will show me, we're going to worship there, and then we, Isaac and me, we're going to come back to you. Why would Abraham say such a thing? Because Abraham had an expectancy that was attached to his worship, which was that I'm going to go worship God. I'm going to go and sacrifice what I love for God. I'm going to go be obedient to God. But I have an expectancy that God is going to do the work 
to work this thing out for me so that when it's all said and done, Isaac and I are going to come back together. I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know what God's plan is, but I'm going to worship God, expecting God to do something. There's a song that I love by Travis Green called Made A Way. And he says, made a way. Don't know how you did it, but you made a way. Standing here, not knowing how we'll get through it, is the test. But holding on to faith, you know that nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and you're watching us now. You made a way. When our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And I'm standing here only because you made a way. Abraham was facing another test of his faith in his life. The so-called father of faith was being tested. It was as if Abraham could, could hear Travis Green's song playing in his head as he went to go and worship God with expectancy. Abraham was saying, God, you've made a way in my life before when my back was against the wall and I needed you to defeat some enemies for me. When Sarah and I traveled through Egypt, you made a way. When my back was against the wall and I needed you to show up and bring peace to my baby mama drama, you made a way. When my back was against the wall and I needed you to make a good on your promise, even though I was 100 years old, at the age of 100, you made a way. And I'm standing here right at this point, this test of faith, because you made a way. A father's faith requires you to worship with expectancy. You probably know the rest of the story. Abraham took the wood and he laid it on Isaac. And he carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them continued on this journey of faith. Abraham was trusting God. And Isaac was trusting Abraham. And what some have called one of the most poignant moments in scripture, Isaac says to his father, Father, the father and the fire and the wood are here. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham responds, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Yes, Abraham was ready to worship God with expectancy. He was expecting God to provide. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering was Abraham's statement of faith. We affirmed our faith earlier. Abraham's statement of faith was God will provide. A father's faith requires you to be able to state with expectancy. I don't know how he's going to do it, but God himself will provide. No matter the test, no matter the trial, no matter the challenge that comes our way, fathers of faith must be able to say that God himself will provide. And say it with expectancy because you're expecting God to show up and show out in your situation. And so when they arrived at the place that, that God had shown them and Abraham prepared to worship God by building an altar and laying wood on the altar and, and binding up his son, Isaac, his only son, and, and laying Isaac on top of the wood. And then he began to raise a knife to sacrifice his son. In my spiritual imagination, I believe that this father of faith, what he was doing, he was willing to sacrifice what he loved for God when he raised that knife. He was willing to be obedient to God when he raised that knife. And because he was worshiping God with expectancy, Abraham was expecting that God would make a way out of no way. And then it happened. As Abraham's hand was raised with the knife, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. God called Abraham's name just like he did in the beginning of the test. You see, God is with us in the beginning and God is with us at the end. And Abraham responded, here I am. Just as I was with you in the beginning, I will be with you in the end. I don't know what test you're in, but God started out with you in the test and God is going to end with you in the test. And so... He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God 
since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked, and he saw a ram that was caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram, and he offered it up as a burnt offering instead of Isaac. God had provided a ram in the bush. Fathers, this Father's Day, God has sent me by to remind you that when you have a faith crisis that's happening in your life, a father's faith requires you to worship God with expectancy. The expectancy that God always has a ram in the bush. Always. And you got to believe it. You see, the reason why God always has a ram in the bush is because when you're in relationship with God, when God has made a promise to you, our God is one who always keeps his promises. And so there is no way that God was going to allow Isaac to be killed for Isaac was Abraham's child of the promise and so God is a promise keeper and he always has a ram in the bush for you on this father's day uh, fathers if you are in a relationship with God and if God has made some promises to you I don't know if they're promises about your relationship your finances your health your mind your body I don't know what promises God has made to you but a father of faith should always know that God always keeps his promises and God has a ram in the bush just for you yes a father's face requires you to sacrifice what you love for God. A father's faith requires you to be obedient to God. And a father's faith requires you to worship God with expectancy, always believing that God has a ram in the bush for your faith challenge. This is Father's Day. Do you have a father's faith? Won't you pray with me? God, we thank you for reminding us first about the faith that you exhibited when you sent your only son for the sins of the whole world. When you allowed him to die, knowing that he would be raised on the third day because you had faith in the end of the story. And so, God, if there is any father, any person under the sound of my voice who's not accepted this gift that you've given us in Jesus Christ, in his life, in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, and in his soon return, if you've not made that declaration, especially to my fathers this morning. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, maybe you've been in church, maybe you've played around the church, maybe you've run from the church, but today you recognize there's some stuff going on in your life and you need to have a father's faith. If that's you, won't you accept Jesus Christ on today? And then if there are those who are going through a faith challenge right now, whether you be fathers or not, God came by to remind you to love God first, to be obedient to what God has told you to do. And then he's come to remind us that we've got to worship him with expectancy. So worship him until your ram in the bush shows up. If you needed to hear that today, won't you affirm with God that you've heard the message that God had for you on today? And then, if you're under the sound of my voice and you're not a part of a church and you want to connect with the kingdom of God, you, you want to become a part of God's church, then the Lomax Church will, will receive you. Maybe you're even in a digital space and you want to become a, a digital member of Lomax. We're doing that these days. But all we need you to do is reach out to us so that we can reach back to you. We thank God for the reminder of faith and our journey of faith with God on this day. And we pray that God, what you've poured into us will sink deep into our souls and that it will nourish and feed us in the days and weeks to come. And it's in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Let everyone say, Amen.
receive our benediction and then our doxology. We thank you for worshiping with us on today. Um, also want to just acknowledge the uh, wonderful Father's Day expressions that were sent by the senior ministry to the fathers of Lomax. Uh, we appreciate the senior ministry looking out for the fathers of Lomax. And with that, we'll receive our benediction. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling Unto him who was able to present us before the presence of his throne with exceedingly great joy. To our all-wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And let the people of God say, Amen. Yeah. 